Hello, everybody. How are you? It is so good to see you. So, today is Sunday, September 19th. Wow, I cannot believe, number one, that summer has gone, and number two, that in just a couple days, it will officially be fall. So, hello everybody. Sorry I was running a few minutes late. I've been on downtime, which means Mark took off to the beach for his, he hadn't been to the beach. He loves these trips. He tries to go twice a year for a few days to kind of just rejuvenate his soul because he works really hard and you know, it's a lot living with me <laughs> and our three dogs and our six chickens and two birds and outside wildlife. So it's a lot. And he loves to get away to the ocean. He is a huge fan of the ocean. And when he lived in Texas for 27 years, he didn't get to go to the ocean as often as he would have liked. So anyway... He's due to come back today, and I'm so excited. to. I, we both have, have, you know, it was like fun for a couple of days to do your own thing and eat when you want and have quiet and watch whatever TV you wanted. But after a couple of days, it was like, okay, this is not fun anymore. I want him back. So anyway... You, Marcia's dad was born on September 21st. Oh, that's neat. Hello, Carol. So let's see all who's here, and then I have a few things to show you. But I just wanted to tell you, I've been on downtime, which means I have been lazy. All I did was take care of all the animals, the outside plants, keep the house clean. But then I was lazy, lazy, lazy. Every day I got in my hammock. Oh was so wonderful. So anyway, okay, it's still hot in South Carolina. Yeah, it's still hot and muggy here. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. <laughs> I mean, it's not 90s anymore, but still mid to upper 80s and very humid. And we need rain desperately, but not as bad as California. Oh, those poor people. So Marsha's here. Marsha's first one here. And Sonia's here. And Jody, hi, sweetheart. Oh, it's so good. Kathy Klein, hi, hon. It is so good. Carol's here. That You know, my dad, Marsha, my dad was born March 20th, the first day of spring. And uh, I still have fond thoughts of March 20th. The nicest thing is my grandson, Russell, was born March 20th. Isn't that nice? So it's kind of nice to pass that along. All right. Well, I did a few things because I only did a few things. I thought I was going to get stuff around the house and some decorating stuff done. I thought I would work on my unfinished projects. No. <laughs> so, okay. But last night I said, well, I have to have something to show them tomorrow. So I went and got some of my dried gourds. And, you know, I buy, sometimes I buy bags of gourds from the grocery store to decorate with. And if I'm lucky, they dry without rotting. So, but they unfortunately dry a yellow tan drab color. They lose all their pretty color. So I got out my paints and I just started painting and I thought I'd add a little whimsy. That's the big word in decorating, you know. Not odd, but whimsy, whimsical. <laughs> and here is another one that I did. I just had fun with them. All right. So that was easy. I just got them and started work on them. Then, whoops, I, had, I looked up in my supply of craft stuff. And I found these round jars. So I painted this to look like a pumpkin. And then you probably, let me see if I can turn this light off so you can see. All right. Let's see if you can see the, it's got the candles in it. And on this side, it's a pumpkin. 
with good old little marbles that are hot glued on it. Oh, you can see the, the candles better from the, the face side. And then this side is just for the rest of the time. So, and I put a little uh, Mod Podge over the top just to kind of, because when you paint on glass, unless you get specific paint, ceramic paint, it can be scratched off. So the nice thing though, if I want to use this for something else, I'll just soak it and scrub off the paint. But for right now, it's cute. Then I got, I have these fall leaves that, that, that I like to, to get. And I got some that were just tissue paper. They were so thin, but they were really colored beautifully. So I thought of decoupaging. So this is the same kind of glass globe, and I decoupaged the leaves on it. And I think that's really sweet. And it was, you know, just some Mod Podge, and, and then I sealed it, and um, it's got a candle. It's just a battery-powered candle in it. So I, I can just sit in, in the evening, you know, turn on the battery candle, and just enjoy but we see in fact the, the neatest thing about these battery candles is they flicker is that amazing so then the last thing that i did a decoupage to was i just got a ball jar and um i put the same thin tissue paper leaves and decoupaged them on the jar and it's got a candle in it in fact, see it flicker? Isn't that the neatest thing? And then I just hot glued some ribbon on the rim and some leaves on the top. And you've got a simple little fun thing. So they all have candles in them. Then I always show you the good and the bad. Because that's life. I mean, you know, it's like... Went to the doctor this week. My blood pressure was great. My blood sugar was great. But my weight hadn't gone down any. So it's like, you've got to keep losing weight. I know, I know. So she wanted to prescribe some Ozempic for me, which I would have to give myself a shot in the tummy, which I wasn't happy about. Found out, though. I'm on Medicare, and I have a supplement, but even with the supplement, it was going to be over $500 for the medicine. So what I did is I talked to Mark, and I said, Mark, I have to do more. You know, what I'm eating is pretty good because my blood sugar level is good, but I'm not losing weight now. So we agreed that every day we're going to go take a walk. No excuses. Go take a walk. So... You gotta take the good with the bad, you know? You, you think, oh, this is gonna be a great checkup. Mm. So, but at least last year I was facing a cancer diagnosis and all of that. So I can walk, you know, compared to that, this is a piece of cake. So then I did something, and uh, this is where I took autumn colored yarn. And I wrapped it around a, um, a balloon, and I thought I put enough glue on it. But evidently, you have to put a massive amount of glue. So this one is not a success because, can you see this? <laughs> it's very soft. And if you look at it wrong, you could collapse it. <laughs> so <laughs> what I think I'm going to do this wasn't that much fun. My hand kept sticking to the yarn, and the yarn would pull loose. And when I went to try to take the balloon out of it this morning, this came loose. And so what I'm going to try to do to save it is take it out with some spray acrylic sealer. See if that will work. If not, I'm going to soak it in hot water to get the gunk off the yarn. And I may or may not try this again, but I just was looking for something else interesting to do. And 
a squishy pumpkin is not necessarily a good thing. In fact, I took a paintbrush handle and was trying to poke it back out because it wanted to just collapse up. So I guess collapsing would be a good thing to do to store it. But then now I've got this one. And in fact, I can stick this candle up in it to show you. And this one was a different kind of yarn, and I made it a little bit bigger than the other one. And you can even see, I even put Mod Podge over this because I was worried since the yarn was so thin, I was worried it wouldn't even hold. But see how you can just collapse it? So... That's, I mean, I thought, I put, I thought a lot of glue, but it didn't quite work. So maybe the yarn has to be more robust. I don't, I don't know, but I can kind of take and pull it back into some kind of shape. And anyway, this didn't quite work, but hey, you could have a safe you could play football in the house with it. It's nice and soft and safe. But anyway, so I'll put that back over there. And at least it will look good if you don't get too close. Here, I'll put the candle in that one too. So we'll have, we'll have some nice fall decor, okay? <laughs> All right. Then another thing I did while I was working... I love my paper beads, and I made a good number of paper beads this week, and they're just my go-to thing when I just want to relax, and I love the idea of using junk mail. I don't buy any paper now. It's all junk mail, and I, oh, somebody wrote to me. I had a little conversation going with somebody who found the paper bead making video, and I went back and watched part of it. And I don't use magazine pages anymore because I have a really, oh, I should have brought it down here. I have a really good bead maker that you can get at Fire Mountain for $10. It's a purple bead maker. And what I love about it is it's stainless steel blade that you put the paper on so it doesn't stick anymore. And it has a built-in plunger. So it pushes the bead off for you. Because the, uh, the problem I had with the other one, it was an a, a unfinished type metal and the paper would stick to it. And too often I was like digging and pulling and unraveling the bead to try to get it off. So now I just use the junk mail or things I print out. Like if I print out today's schedule, I use that. And there's always, between all the junk mail you get, there's always plenty so then I can save the pretty paper to just do along an edge. But magazine paper just got a little slippery and kind of fussy to deal with. But I also wrote on it that I now do use the triple thick instead of the Mod Podge because it doesn't stick. It just gives a nicer, harder finish. But I did tell her I will make soon I will make another video or do a little live stream about paper bead making because it is something I enjoy and uh, it might be something you want to too especially if you're on a budget everyone can afford to do paper bead making if you use junk mail it's so so easy and I'm trying to transition out of using safety um, the safety printed paper inside the envelopes because you can only do so many of those, but sometimes you might get lucky and you might have a blue safety print inside an envelope or a red one. But I said, okay, I've done all the black printed safety envelopes. And if you know what I mean, they, they make the envelope, they give it privacy by printing something on the paper that's inside the envelope. And it can make really fabulous beads. Well, I'm running on, sorry. I haven't had anybody to talk to all week. So I'm doing all my talking with y'all. <laughs> but the little things that I was using, I took little styrofoam and I put toothpicks in it. And that's what I, once I rolled a bead, because, you know, you use white glue, they get a little sticky and they need to dry. So then I would put them on, on 
a piece of styrofoam with toothpicks in it, set them on the toothpicks. Well, what I found is I hadn't finished the toothpicks. They were raw wood. So they tended to have the glue glom on them, and they got kind of funky and messy over time. And then they wanted to constantly come out of the styrofoam. And the more I put them back in the styrofoam, then the holes got too big and it was just a mess. So let me show you what I did yesterday. I went looking in the garage and I found the perfect styrofoam. If you want to make your own bead holders, um, the best styrofoam is that plasticky kind of styrofoam, not the kind that crumbles. You know, the kind that's made out of a bunch of little balls forced together that, that gets real crumbly if you break it or cut it. This is the best kind. In fact, this has layers and it's very squeaky, plasticky, and it does not crumble. It's a different kind. This is the best. It came in. It was it was packing protection around whatever we ordered. So I'm reusing it. And what I did is I took a razor knife because this was a much bigger piece. So I took a razor knife. It cut so easily. And I cut it to the size I want. And why do I choose this side? Because I've got two rows of toothpicks. And it's real easy to fit the beads in. And without, because you don't want to handle them too much. And, and then especially when you put the finish back on them, you don't want them touching, sticking to each other. But anyway, this is the perfect size. I have a little lap table upstairs. And this can fit very easy on my lap table. So I made two new ones of these. And then when I go to put them away, I just stick them together like that and, and put them wherever I keep them. The neat thing I did was I got some water-based polyurethane and I put polyurethane on them. And I took the toothpick and I dipped it in the can of polyurethane and then rubbed the excess off inside the lid and then stuck it into the styrofoam. And you probably can't see because I did a pretty good job. A little bit would pool around each one, but it helped make them stuck it dried into and and by pushing it in with the polyurethane on it it stuck all the way inside as i pushed it into this foam then i took a paintbrush and brushed around the little pools that that developed along i sealed the base of the toothpicks and i had to go back and and seal the tips where I held it when I dipped it in the polyurethane. So I have two of these really nice sturdy. And I like this is heavier than what I had before. It, since it's made in layers, it's nice and firm. It won't fall over as easily. The other ones, I mean, I made them a couple, three, four years ago. And they were just quick, get something together. But these now have been sealed. And they are going to work beautifully and then I took a big piece this is for when I um, am really busy putting the ceiling finish the finish on them and the reason it's so much bigger is it's fast to do that because once I take my beads and then I sand them then I just put them on a, a little wooden skewer like this put them on a little wooden skewer and then I put the finish, put the finish, and then I carefully put them onto the toothpick to, to dry. I try to get them to fall off the skewer. If they don't, then I have to carefully just touch them with my fingernails and put them here. But when, you, when I'm rolling paper beads, those little ones are fine because it takes time to roll a paper bead. Where put the finish on, it only takes mere seconds. So that is a lot and it's a nice sturdy block and like I say no chipping or no little balls of it falling off anywhere so I'm real happy all sealed and firmly in place I'm real happy that I did that so and to me that kind of stuff is fun so I'm trying to think if there's anything 
So today is week number four of our Christmas block of the week. I haven't made it yet. <laughs> In fact, I was turning the, the thing around today and I went, oh no, I didn't even finish that quarter of last week's block. So I'm a mess today, guys. I've been playing hooky and having fun just catching up on Acorn TV shows. I love my British shows. I caught up on all my emails and laying in the hammock. And um, <laughs> I did put the dog's flea protection on, so that was good. And I bathed Gromit. But <laughs> here I go. So let me show you this week's block. Now, some people have said, oh, that block was, those blocks were a little bit hard. But what I'm hoping is as you do them, they will get easier. Pat, hello, sweetheart. Oh, I hope it was a good movie. Mark, um, Mark uh, texted me the other night. He was getting ready to watch Cool Hand Luke. So he was real excited because in the hotel, you know, he had all that quiet time to himself. So, you still have lots of paper. Oh, that's wonderful. I, so, I will. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, I don't have a, a video editing program yet. I haven't worked that out. So, I may just do one of my little pop-up live streams just so I can get it out there. And I like doing that because that way I can talk to you just like I've talked to you here. And it saves that nasty editing that I hate so much. So... Oh, I've got a, a fun quilt to show you today, too. Don't let me forget. Then I've got your um, your photos to show you. Some really good ones. And last week, I'm trying to think of who. There was somebody's quilt that I didn't end up showing. Artwork. And it was a wonderful painting with fingernail polish and alcohol. Oh, it was so cool. So I, I hope to make sure to find that for you. So this week's block is called Snowballs and Stars. Hi, Michelle, sweetheart. Oh, good to, yeah, it is good to take a break. Because you know what? I, 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 I do this. Michelle knows. She knows me well enough that I kind of get going and going and going, get momentum, and then I end up burning the candle at both ends. And don't realize until the middle is starting to burn up. So this is really nice. And it, it's just been quiet. You know, it's funny. With Mark working from home now, I said, you know, you bring stress into the house. And when he's sitting there and he's having really busy day or frustrating things come up at his work, that comes into the home now. And I'm not used to that. So, it's been kind of nice. Hi, Miss Lisa. Hi, Lisa. In fact, Lisa, I think I owe you an email. A couple of you I owe emails. And I apologize. I'll get back to them. But anyway, but it was just nice to have kind of quiet. And so, things like I turned off the news most of the week. Especially yesterday, I didn't know what was going to happen to the Capitol. And you know what? I turned it off because it was like, I can't change anything. I can't fix anything. And sometimes I just need to keep it out of my brain. So anyway. All right. Well, this is this week's. It's called Snowballs and Stars. And you know that it's the theme for this quilt is snowballs and stars. So this is a signature block. Here it is from the website of Wombat Quilts. And Kath, this is her design. All of these are her design. And isn't that a sweet? I love that block. So here I have it in color. This helps when I'm getting ready to work on it. Because when you see a piece like this, you're like, what? Where does that go? And how does that work out? Now, I will tell you that <laughs> the more you make the easier it gets because it's like your brain develops memory. You know how you develop muscle memory? Well, your brain develops memory. 
so that you go, ah, I know that this big piece is background. Do y'all see that bruise? I had blood drawn this week, and I did make sure that I drank, but she swore I didn't. And when I sent in my evaluation of the visit, I complained about her. I said, this is the second time I've had her, and I've got the bruises to prove it, and I don't like her attitude. And that's not usually me, but I thought, no, I've got to speak up. I don't like the phlebotomist, not at all. So anyway, but here is the block. Now, it looks hard, but please remember, please remember that on paper piecing, you follow the number. And what really helps me this is what it looks like when you get it and print it out that's what it looks like here is what it looks like once i have planned it and i write in what i'm putting where melissa lamb so good to see you and we have a photo from melissa was it one we've had a couple new members lately so i'm a little confused <laughs> but i do remember miss melissa and melissa yes i welcomed her because we have our famous jody from ohio too and uh chillica Ch chillica <laughs> ohio i'm so i mangle that every time don't i so okay so what i thought i would do I'm going to put this on the site, and also please remember that um, our time to quilt and at oopstwc.com. Okay, if you send me an email to that, I will shoot you out a pattern. And I'm trying to get it to where people I've sent out patterns for the other weeks that then I will automatically send you this one. But if not, please just email me. I don't mind at all. It takes me 30 seconds to send you a pattern. So it's really, really easy. Now, also, I don't know if someone here, if you're a fast typist, but I am looking for another moderator for today's date. Our Miss Susan's so busy. I tell you what, she is getting ready to build a house. She works full time. She's a quilt tester and she runs our Saturday Jitsies. So if someone here, if you're good at typing and like when I just say, if you send me an email to this address, if you could shoot that email out, I would love to have you be our moderator. And also, if you notice somebody who's up to no good, you could quickly zap them, you know, if they say something that's rude. But luckily, we have hardly had any of that happen. But let me know if you'd like to be a moderator. Okay. Now, one thing I want to point out when you're looking at it, it's good to look at the former picture. Because that will show you what works and what doesn't. I'll give you a couple of examples. I love how the tips are a nice, bold red. I don't like that she used a red right there for the side of, of this arrow. See how it's one arrow with another arrow on the end of that arrow. And so this is telling me be a little careful with contrast because you want the arrows to stand out. I also like how the center is bold and it plays with the color on the outside. So take your time, get a little box of crayons or some colored pencils and kind of practice. And um, you need four pages of it. And please do what I do, which is write the information on the square because when you look at this you'll go wait a minute how does this how does this work again also be careful when you go to sew the pieces together you have an a and you have a b well you could put them like this that would work but that's going to give you a y seam so 
Don't put these together this way. What you're going to do is you're going to put the centers. Whoops. Hold on. I'll get it. You put the centers together like this, and you make yourself a nice little square. Then you make two, make another square, sew those together. Then make two other squares, sew those together, and then you have one straight seam down the middle. So, piece of cake. All right. Now, I'm not going to show you yet how I sew that because I haven't sewn any of it. And what I'm going to do is I'll do that at the end. Because some of you know what you're doing. Once you get the pattern, you're off with it. Also, I'll make sure I will finish the block today. Within the next 24 hours, I'll finish the block. Put a picture on the site here and on our group SIO. And that way it kind of helps you. Because I think it really helps to see the other blocks that we've made understand that when you make today's block you'll be a third of the way through is that cool that's the one thing i love about doing it one bite at a time before you know it you're a third of the way through with a new quilt top so it's all good all good all right i haven't figured out yet Probably because I didn't really take the time to try. But I don't have the video from last week's quilt show. I, I It's on a little card. But I don't know if I told you that my new these new computers, they take stuff away all the time. It's now got one of those micro mini slots, so I can't put my memory card. My camera takes the big memory card. This takes the little one. I forgot when I went to film the, the quilt show because somewhere I have a card that has a mini card built in, and it just uses the big card to put it in that device. I didn't use that to film it. So I'm going to have to, Mark's got his computer with him, and I'm going to have to use his computer to put the big card in to then transfer it to my computer. So I do apologize. Somewhere around is my old comp my la old laptop, and maybe that will work to transfer it. Cheryl Hogan's in the house. Wonderful. All right. But I will get it, and I'll post it. Because I we don't we love show and tell? And to see the this quilt show is wonderful. All right. Let's see. So I've just started fall decorating. Mark's going to be home anytime. And when, after I let him rest a little, then I want, he's going to get up in the attic and get out all my fall decorations. And let me tell you, I, oh, where is she? She's at the lake. I love Cheryl Hogan's lake. I love it. That's wonderful, sweetheart. So I think it was Cheryl. I think, is Cheryl sent pictures of her house on the lake? I thought it was hers. It might be somebody else. I apologize. But my brain is not sharp today. You spend a week by your, yourself. I only went off once, and that was to the pharmacy to pick up some medicine. So it's just been me here. And it's been fun, but I'm glad it's over today. All right. So, but I will be doing some fall decorating. I think one of the reasons I love fall so much is I hate August. August is so hot. Not your house. Oh, okay. Then who, I wonder who it was that lived. Actually, it was a river, not even a lake. Oh, well, you enjoy that being on a lake. Hopefully in a few weeks, I'll be at a lake too. We'll cross our fingers and I'll have to let you know. But anyway... I do want to get the quilt show um, downloaded so I can show you. I mean, yeah, the quilt show at in Galax, Virginia. All right. Please don't forget that the pen cushion contest, I've got three entries so far. And please don't forget that uh, the deadline for getting a picture to me is October 1st. And then that's, that's a Friday and that's Sunday. You will be picking the winner. And the winner gets a $10 gift certificate to the online shop of their choice. All right. So excited. I found out that I'm going to have a brand new nephew. 
And it's from my nephew, Adam, and his wife, Jessica. They, I mean, they just had a brand new nephew. And his name is Levi Gray. Isn't that cool? So I'm so excited. So I ordered some fabric to make them a baby quilt. And I'm going to hurry up and get that done and shoot it out to them. So how wonderful. Um, okay, so I told you about the, reminded you of the pen cushion contest. I need to get busy making one myself. But we only have two weeks left, so get busy. Um, and use that email address, ourtimetoquilt at twc.com. And please to send me the picture of the pen cushion you make, okay? Now... I haven't even worked on my crumb quilt, and I did not once sit down at the long arm this week. So my poor little kaleidoscope quilt is just sitting there, unloved. <laughs> All right. I think that I, oh, I wondered, I think I told y'all last week, the Misty Woodland quilts that we did on Thursday night. We're taking a little break. We've got another week or two of break from our Thursday night quilting. And... But we will come back to it. And if you have an idea or something you'd like me to teach you or an idea for something fun for us to work on, please let me know at our time to quilt at twc.com. But I was going to tell you that um, I spent a few days down here cleaning up after that project. And I told you all about that last week. But what was, I mean, it took me time. Time because when I... I pull all of that fabric out and then ruffle through it and, all right, let me see. Oh, <laughs> Levi could wear denim. Marsha, you are you are a sharp one. That is so cute. But, um, but I, I took the time to iron everything, even if I just folded it. Um, and if it was too messy, I ironed it even to put it in the scrap bag. But... I do the folding method, the Maria Kondo type of folding. I, I, the bigger pieces I put on what I love, which is the mini um, comic boards. And these are made, they're, they are archival, safe, no acid will leak out. They're made for people who collect comic books. And, but they're really great for storing the fabric on. You wrap it around, then I use a great big paper clip and clip the fabric on, and then it goes in little bins. And if it's not big enough to go on a comic board, then I fold it and do it in thirds, and it's nice and neat and tidy. And those go in little, um, like, knife and fork drawer plastic things I got from the dollar store. But I wanted to say, even though sometimes you just don't want to deal with it and the temptation is start a new project and don't worry about the mess, but it was so good that I took that time and cleaned it up because, number one, you get to return those fabrics into the general population. If you let piles, if you tend to let things pile up or you shove it in bags, then you, that's that part of your stash is not available for you to use. And so the one thing, it doesn't matter how big your stash is, but have all of your stash there and available. And it's like my, when I used to go buy Jenny Buyer fabrics, I kept all that in a separate place. Well, that wasn't fair because I wasn't, I didn't end up using it. It was my favorite fabric. And now when I make quilts and I shop my stash, I shop a lot of Jenny Buyer because I love the color, the tone, the fabric itself. So just make sure you take the time to clean up. Put on some good music. Put on some um, uh, Netflix or Acorn on your laptop. And I just brought everything over here and I just ironed and watched dumb shows and, you know, and then what the main thing I did is I had different baskets. One was for all of my comic board size. The other was just for the folded size. And then I had a third one for landscape things. 
And that way, if you sort it, you try to touch things as little as possible. If you can touch something once, that's that much better. And what that means is if you iron it and put it there, and then later you have to come get it and put it in, you know, away. The more times you touch it, the longer it takes to keep your room clean. So I love the three basket method. And that works for cleaning out a junk drawer. The save, the put to a, to put to a different place or throw it away or give to someone and, or throw it away. And um, so try to touch it as little as possible. And it just really refreshes and recharges um, get you ready for your next activity and you'll be very happy. You can find stuff more easily. You're ready to go. So I just wanted to make sure I finished talking to you about that. Why is it important to clean things up, put them away once you finish a project? And it's kind of nice. In some ways it goes, okay, that one's done. And then you clean up, you have a fresh slate fresh clean room start your next project i think you're you because for a while there you know how i took the foam core board and made those trays project trays for a while i had them all filled up and i didn't have them to use to start a new project well that shows too much going on too many fabrics that i could use to choose for a different project and fabrics make all the difference in how a project turns out. And the reason I'm telling you this is one of our new members is making the... Hi, Betty Middleton! Oh, it's so good to see you. One of our new members said, well, I just used the fabric I had. She's doing the Christmas block of the week with us. Wait till you see the fabric she used. It's exquisite. I mean, it took these sweet blocks and it elevated them to hoity and toity, let me tell you. So look forward to seeing that. Okay, I'm first going to show you this little quilt. And I forget where I got this fabric or who made it or what. I love this fabric. Is that just the perfect fall fabric? So... When I was, when I had a local guild here, I was always looking for blocks of the month, some kind of interesting activity for us to do. And I found these online free, and they are the cutest thing. And so what we did is we decided to do what you call red work, but this is, I hate doing that. Why did I do that? Anyway, what you call red work. And um, so that's what we did. And but we used all the different colors. The only reason it's called red work is because it's back when turkey red as a dye became popular. And all of a sudden it was cheap and everybody could afford red embroidery thread. So everybody did everything in red. Indigo, did you realize that indigo is a multi-step process? And even though most people could afford to have some indigo in a bucket in their kitchen, there was a lot of work to getting that indigo um, ready. So, and before the turkey red, it was cochineal red. Cochineal is a bug from South America that would live on these trees and they would have to be harvested and then crushed to get the red color out of them. Well, it took like 50,000 bugs to get a little over, I don't know, a pound of dye. So that's expensive. So anyway, so I just thought I would show you these blocks. They're cute as can be. And they kind of look like a little bit of a primitive. And if I can find them, I will share them with you. But this goes back a few years. I might not be able to find them. But I want to get this finished. Is that the cutest? And there, there's a B-step. And then look at this. Oh, let me, I, I have to be careful that I can see if I'm holding it correctly. Isn't that cute? And look at this. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. 
All right. Now let me fold it and show you some more. And all I need to do is quilt it. I mean, come on, Deb. <laughs> so this year, I'm going to be such a busy girl getting some of these things done. In some cases, I want to show you something. I, I didn't know exactly how I was going to set them. And the fabric is called, is it hard hangers? No, I'm trying to remember. But it's an old-fashioned fabric. And see how I didn't have it big enough once I decided what size the blocks were going to be? So I just sewed the extra on it to make it the size I needed. So don't, you know, don't get yourself upset if something like that happens. Just think, what would my grandmother have done? And your grandmother would have said, just sew some extra fabric. And be done with it. It says, bless this house. And then here is cherry pie. Isn't that cute? So I just love this. And it's a beautiful fall fabric or primitive colors fabric. But it's what it is really, it's like a, a, a wall calendar kind of deal to show you the different seasons. And look at that. So, anyway, I think that's absolutely cute. And I think I embellished some of the original patterns. But I need to get this quilted and get this put up because it's just so cute. And I thought you might get a kick out of seeing that. And it's fun. And it reminds me, finish these quilts and use them. Either hand them on or use them. So now... Let's go look at your, whoops, let me see what you said real quick. Ah, ah. there, I ah, know, I know, it, it really doesn't pay to throw stuff on the floor because we don't have a lovely assistant that comes scooting in and cleans it up, do we? So, ah, uh, okay, here we go. Let me turn off the lights and let's go see what you've shown, what you have to share with us because your show and tell is so much fun. All righty, here we go. All right. Here we go. Let's go look at, whoops, come on. I need to get a new mouse. This mouse isn't the best working mouse. Okay. I want to make sure to show this again for Miss Alberta. It is huge, and it's wonderful. This is a king-size quilt. I have never made a king-size quilt, so I have such admiration for Miss Alberta. Let me tell you, she is something else. Whoops, let me get my fan here. I'm having a private summer moment here. So way to go, Miss Alberta. That hunter's noise and not, it's not a hunter star. Oh, but I like the design. That's really cool. All right, let's see what else. And since Miss Betty's here, let's revisit her Garden of Eden, Misty Woodland. I love it. Love, love, love it. Isn't that the cutest thing? Especially their naked little butts. I mean, how cute is that? So she said a painter who was working on her house said, it looks like the Garden of Eden. So that's what she turned it into. Isn't that great? And I think there's a snake down here and there's apples. Love it. Okay, let's see who's next. Miss Bonnie has been busy. She just finished this log cabin. Isn't that beautiful? I love how dramatic her fabrics are. That, it, that gets your attention, commands your attention, doesn't it? Great work, Miss Bonnie. All right, we'll go back and see some of her things. Like that's her wonderful table runner. Love rainbow colors. Then here is her Irish elephant. Isn't that the cutest? And here are some blocks she's been working on. 
and she's gotten all caught up on those. Wonderful. Okay, let's see who is next. Carol, who's here? Ah, it was Carol's box. Are you ready to be wowed? Okay, look at this. She was saying, I just used what I had. I was like, my jaw dropped onto the desk. I said, that is exquisite fabric. Is that just the most elegant thing? Way to go, Miss Carol. Way to go. Look at this one. Isn't that beautiful? Very nice. And I just love how the fabrics work so beautifully. Kind of gives it a look of a kaleidoscope at the same time. So that's going to be quite an elegant, elegant Christmas quilt. So way to go. Thank you, Miss Carol. We want to keep progress with that. It's beautiful. Then... Our Charlene Lawson, who's not here this week because her son's getting married. This is the back. Whoops, I didn't mean to come that far out. Whoops, come on, go back in. There we go. Charlene Lawson made this wonderful satin ring bearer's pillow for her son's wedding. And oh, just to remind you, here is her inspiration for that three-part landscape. She did such a wonderful job of, and she's also working on Alex Anderson's Spinning Spools quilt. Wonderful job. And here is the front. The little bows are for them to tie the ring on. And look at the quilting. It's hearts. Isn't that sweet? And look at all those pearls. Just a lovely, lovely job, Miss Charlene. So thank you for showing those to us. And I hope it's a just a picture book, storybook wedding for them, for you all. Here is her Misty Woodland quilt. And I love when you make it your own, whether it's the Garden of Eden, Eden from Miss Betty to her Wood, woods full of wonderful flowers and wildlife. Beautiful. Whoops. Hold on. There, there it is. Just I think that's about finished there. Just wonderful. Okay. And look at this. This is a beautiful job of that three-part landscape. Very, very effective. I love it. Okay. I think I just have a couple things to show you. And this is my Mark when he was getting ready to leave last week. I can't wait for the, to hear that motorcycle drive up. Cannot wait. Look at the beach. Look at the sky view. No wonder this makes him feel so, so good. Just to smell the salt air. Now, this, where he goes, it's on a strip of land. So you've got an inlet. I think it's the inland, what do they call it? The uh, inland waterway that goes down the east coast. But look at this. Isn't that amazing? Oh. Just beautiful. This is a nurse made this. It's a chandelier made from vaccination empty vials. So make sure you get your vaccinations so that they can make more chandeliers like this. Whoops, 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 hold on. National Sewing Month. <laughs> I didn't realize, but I guess it is. It's also Hispanic Heritage Month. So please wish someone a happy Hispanic Heritage Month near you. And here is my grand dog, Henry, that was just a puppy a few months ago. And now he is, I guess he's probably about eight months old. Whoops. Then my daughter was very frustrated, the same daughter that owns Henry. 
was very frustrated because her husband or her son cut down her American beautyberry bush that I gave her. This is the third time that they have cut it down. So she said, now she thinks maybe they'll leave it alone. <laughs> Luckily, American beauty berries are such a tough bush. They will come back from the roots eventually. Poor thing. So here is Debbie Holt's quilt. I know you have probably seen this a couple times, and I dearly love it. I see new things each time. I show these three or four times before... We move on just because, like, I think like me, you'll find something interesting every new time you see it. I heard from Miss Diana Wright this week. She got to come to Pineapple Fabrics. So I'm so excited to see her there. She had a wonderful time, bought lots of fabric. There she is with her huge pile of fabrics, and she loved it. She had a wonderful time shopping. So way to go, Miss Diana Wright. We miss you, sweetheart. So I think when, when her life settles down, we'll see her again. All right, Miss Jody, who is here. Miss Jody of the famous, famous... Um, Silhouette quilts, I, I guess that's what you call them. They're just amazing. I should just call them the amazing wonderland of quilting. Okay, and then she has been working on her Christmas blocks of the week. What I love is how different the blocks look depending on the fabrics you're using. So way to go. Way to go, Miss Jody. Now, let's see, Kathleen Ziegler. Oh, she's been staying with a friend, but she sent me this picture to let me know. She's working on her Jenny Byer Moon Glow quilt. And that was probably the first quilt where I knew I was going to be madly in love with quilting. The colors, the, the way she creates, she's the quilter of light, I believe. And uh, so, anyway, way to go, Miss Kathleen Ziegler. We can't wait to hear from you again. And uh, I haven't heard from Miss Linda McCollum, so I'm going to have to check with her, make sure she's okay. Because is this mouse just the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh, love it. Okay, now let's see. Here, Miss Lisa's here. So I get to show you again, we showed you last week what a cutie pie Miss Lisa is. It was the one time that I opened a picture of someone, whoops, my finger is jumping. It's the one time that I've opened a picture and somebody looked exactly like what I thought they would look like. She is just exudes such sweet positive energy and I love it. Look at the octopus she painted. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at this whale. She did this for a church, for the nursery. And there's her sweetie pie husband. And the people in the church built the docks and the part, ship parts. And she painted the walls. Look at all of this. Isn't that wonderful? I just love it. Look at her turtle. Oh! That is gorgeous. Love, love. Oh, it was her. Okay, maybe I did show this. This is, she wanted to do a painting, and she had nail polishes that she didn't want to use anymore, and then she put some alcohol on it to kind of turn them into alcohol ink. And look at that amazing thing. She just was playing and created that. Isn't that amazing? Love, love, love it. So anytime, anything you do like that, please show us because you might give us an idea for something to try that we hadn't thought about. So here is the inspiration, Miss Mary. And sometimes we know her as Monkey Mary. Here is her inspiration and here is the quilt she created out of it. Wonderful. And see, that's the thing I love is 
you take on something small, let your imagination just run with you. Look at all of her stitching, her decorative stitches, and it looks like couched yarn bits. And look, look at the, I guess these are bats or birds in front of the moon there. Wonderful job. I love how she did the moon because only a sliver is, a, is visible. Look how she did that. Wonderful. And that's the thing we love because, oh, look at these cattails she did with her, with her, with her thread stitching. But, oh, she's doing a Christmas block. But when you share things with us, you might give us ideas for something that we want to try. So that is wonderful, you guys. So here are her Christmas blocks, and she's doing very good. So keep up the great work, Mary. Whoops, I didn't mean to close. Isn't that cool how it does that? Might make you a little ill, but it's kind of cute. Okay. I accidentally closed that out. Melanie, all right, here, I think I've, this will be the last week I show her irises and her fabric pounding, all of her floral blocks that she has made. I love that dog. Isn't that wonderful? More flower pounding. Her husband's quilt, you see this, her sewing area, her husband's sewing area, it's wonderful. Okay, look at that. I just love it. There's her husband's quilt. Look at that, sunshine and shadow. I'm not sure what the real name is. I just named it that. But what beautiful work they do together. He was an engineer, and he's retired, and she said, hey, you want to try this? And bless his soul, he did. That's made of all small triangles. That, doesn't that look like an engineer's work to you? Beautiful. Way to go. Okay, now, where are we? Melissa. Yes, I do have amazing work for Miss Melissa. You saw a couple of her things last week. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Judge's Choice. What a beautiful landscape. Wonderful. And look at this. Look at that court jester. Isn't that amazing? I've got a close-up of it where you see all of the fancy, the, the jewels and stones and the fancy quilting and exquisite. This is a portrait. This is the new one. This is a portrait she did of her father. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. Here is another one of her quilts. I love it. Looks like wildflowers in a vase. Wonderful. Look at this one. Isn't that beautiful? And we want to see plenty more of Miss Melissa's work. And look at this farmer. Is that just the coolest thing? Wonderful job. Wonderful. We want to see a whole lot from Miss Melissa. Because, boy, does she do good work and have great new ideas, and we could learn a lot. So, let me see. Yeah, these are, these are Miss Patricia from Nova Scotia. This is amazing. I don't know how some of you people do the cross-stitch. That is very meticulous work. Just amazing. Okay. Now, here we go. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and give you some more inspiration. I'm going to put this on. Whoops. Hold on. I'm going to put this on slideshow to give you inspiration to make a pen cushion. These are some wonderful ideas. There's a bunch more online. But it's so easy nowadays to just go on the internet and work and look at and find out how to do some of these wonderful, wonderful things. Mm -hmm. 
I just heard the motorcycle drive up. I'm so excited. Mm. Oh, look at that hedgehog. Gosh, that's cute. I think I would get too hungry if I made one of a donut. <laughs> and look, Marsha, even ones for crocheters. I love the K facet fabrics too. You know, using wool or felt would be a great idea to, to make a pen cushion because you don't have to worry about enclosing the edges so much. And I love because the wheels under this are really spools of wooden thread spools. That makes me want to find a little container that um, Oh, so Mark just came in and said hello. I think we're probably about the end. You know, we saw that before. But so this should give you some great ideas. Yes, I know we're at the beginning again then. All righty. Now let's go. Whoops. I don't know why I put that back there because what I'm going to do is see what we have left of your images. Miss Polly's wonderful tartan quilt and her lovely fall misty woodland quilt. Love it. She did such a great, whoops, I did that again. She did such a great job. Um, let me see, hold on. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, I'll have to move that out later. It's not working for me. Okay, Cheryl, said Cheryl is here. We'll show one last time of her beautiful grandchildren. Look at those big, healthy boys. How wonderful. And then she does the dreaded hexagons. <laughs> I shouldn't call them the dreaded hexagons because a lot of you like them. And they're great for carrying places. I just, you know, I just get a rash every time I think about doing hexagons. <laughs> My silliness because they're absolutely gorgeous. Especially how she fussy cut the kitties. And what is that? Is that a? Panda or a zebra? I don't know. That's so cool. But, oh, that's amazing. In fact, one of the quilts that got best in show was a quilt that used the English paper piecing, and she did a beautiful job um, fussy cutting the fabrics. Now, here is Miss Susan's wonderful quilts. I love flying geese. 
That's a lot of flying geese, but gosh, I love them. All right, let's see what else Miss Susan has. Her dad's plaids. And then, and these are all, I do believe, test quilts that she's made. Or this might be a block of the month, I think, she was working on that Bonnie was also doing. Wonderful, wonderful job. Okay, let's see. Who else that might have been my last one? Yes, I think it is. And thank you so much. Please keep sending me your work because it inspires us and it's really wonderful to see how much talent there is in this group there is a lot of talent in this group all right let me get back to y'all there you are so thank you very much so really all i have left to do today is let me in fact let me turn off. I'm so I'm so cheap. You know me. I gotta turn off these little candles here because uh, I don't have enough batteries to replace all of them. But I love these little things. I mean, modern technology is so cool, isn't it? it I mean, why bother to take a fire risk and just buy a little battery powered? How cool is that? So let me turn these off. And just make sure if you ever do this string stuff on a balloon, make sure you put so much glue on it you can't believe it. Because otherwise, it's tough. <laughs> it is so tough to do. All right. And my last one. Because I don't want to have to replace you know, it's, it's sad when it's cheaper to buy new ones than it is to buy the batteries to replace them. But, okay. So, let me see. Is there anything, any questions? Laura! Hi, sweetheart! Oh! Celtic would be fun. So, I'll make sure I read your chatter this week because sometimes I get the best ideas from all of you. Everyone did do. And Miss Carol... We love your work, and so many of y'all, you're really wonderful, wonderful people. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let you chat and just work on um, sewing this Christmas block of the week, and I'll make sure that I will put all the patterns up tonight, and I'll have my finished picture on there by tomorrow at the latest. Okay? Aw, aren't y'all the sweetest? Y'all, oh, and done the nice way. It worked out that I put on the slideshow because he was able to come in and say a quick hello. So, Kim is here. Kim, we've missed you. How good to see Kim again. So, all right, I'm going to start sewing. And y'all make sure that if somebody new has come in that I might have missed, make them feel welcome. Because that's the one thing I love about this group. We've got the nicest, nicest people in this group. So, okay. I'm going to start with piece A. And let me come down here a little bit so you can see. Okay, hold on. Whoops. I'm not good at, at tightening this stuff up. So let's see if I can work on this. All right. So here it is, and it says here, it has piece one over here. Well, that's a dumb. I would, I'm going to start, actually, I'm going to start right here with this one, okay? So this one's supposed to be dark red. So now I'm going to get some of my dark red. Let me get my trash can by because, boy, I'll be using a lot uh, I'll have lots of little scraps to throw away. Let me see if I can twist this down just a little. Good. Okay. So I like using, whoops, wrong side. Hold on. I've got to get that off too because when I do, when I iron, oh my goodness, it'll leave a mess. Okay. So you turn over and put the glue. This is why I pre-fold them. Because, see, I can see right where to put it. So I put the glue on this little triangle. 
And then I take my dark red and I put my fabric on here so that it well covers it, but I don't waste any more than I have to. Then I get my little cutting board, my little ruler, and I fold back on the on the lines. Whoops, this helped me to see I need to move this over. All done. I might have tried to be a little too careful with saving fabric. Like I told you before, don't be so careful with saving fabric that you make a mess. Let me see. All right. So now I fold this back here and I put my, I had to go turn my sewing machine stitch down because you want a nice short stitch length. 18 is plenty. All right. And I'm just going to go around this whole piece and trim it back to a quarter of an inch from the paper. And that way, I do it right now, and it saves me a lot of time down the road because when I go to sew those pieces on, it'll already be trimmed. So here we go. All right. So here is the first piece. Then I'm going to take and put this dark teal. Let me see. I'm going to nip this in half. Sometimes it's hard to figure out how to put the fabric on. Now, I line this up, and then I flip it back. And see, it shows me right, right here I'm short of fabric. So what I've got to do is I've got to tilt it differently. Okay? Then fold it up there. That fits. So now, tilted like that, I come run it in. I start sewing before I get to the line. And sew a quarter of an inch after the line. And if any of you need to go, I will totally understand. I'm just going to sit here and make sure I get two of these blocks done. So that in case there are any questions that arise, like, like how they wanted you to put the wrong piece on first. Because that just didn't make sense to me. Why? And you just, you know, you never know. Now, what I like to do is take some of this glue stick. And there we go. And that way I have secured. And then I'm going to cut the little excess off. I've been, since I've been making this block, I've just been keeping things very night and nice and tidy as I go. All right, now I need a dark blue, and I need a curly blue. So let's see. Oh, both of these are dark blue. Okay, never mind. That's right, because I said don't. I, I wanted both of these to be the same so your eye doesn't get too confused. So this one's the dark blue. Let's see. Is this going to fit? I fold it back. Yes, it does. All right. And just that little checking right there can save you from having to tear it out and do it again. Okay. So now, take this over. Then I come back and I fold it up to the next sewing line. Put my little ruler. Oops. Okay. So I think most of you have watched me do this quite a few times. So I may just go a little quiet and let y'all chat. And so I can just get this done. And then I'll make sure when I get the whole block done... Normally, I'm going to have these blocks done before I come on here, but this week, I just, I took it easy this week, and it was much appreciated.
okay I like right here just trim this up you don't want any more excess fabric than you have to have okay now next will be a shiny red Grab a piece of shiny red. And if, if your fabric's not very well pressed, do it before you sew it on to make sure that um, when you put that fabric down, it's exactly where you want it to be. All right. So line it here. Fold the paper down. Yep, it's good. And I hope that none of these blocks take you more than one hour a week. That is my goal, so that it's something that you can enjoy, even if you do just do five or ten minutes a day to get it done, and that you will have a wonderful Christmas quilt well before Christmas. All right, and if I do get to go camping, I might have to do two in one week just so I don't hold you up from your schedule. All right, so now I need the lighter blue, my curly blue. And this is great to use nice little pieces of fabric. This one's great for your smaller pieces because some of these pieces are tiny. Okay. And be thinking about our Linda Ramos and I'm trying to remember who her sister was again. They just lost their mother and I'm really sorry about that. That's got to be hard. using this lime fabric. I don't use selvages when I sew, if I can at all help it. It not only does it look different, it acts differently. Like if you're use, putting fabric together for the backing, cut your selvages off because because they do not stretch the way normal fabric does. And you might think, well, nobody will ever see them. But it does make a difference in how your quilt lays. So never use selvages unless you're making a quilt with sel all selvages. 
you want your fabric to act act all the same. Because I have seen people before, they leave the selvage on when they do their backing and it will not stretch and move the same way. And you can tell, you can see it. Salvages are made to keep the fabric in line. And so it's got a job to do. And that means it won't, you know, the way it's woven, it goes, the, the shuttle with the thread on it goes back and forth. It is made to keep it nice and firm and non-stretchy. That's the strongest length, the lengthwise, as that strong fabric. And it has to be to go through all the rollers and the processing at the fabric mills. But there's not a lot of give in it. I've almost got this block entirely made, guys. So this is going along really well. So if you just take, there's eight, however long it took me to do this, times eight pieces is how long it'll take you to do a block. And actually, it should take you less time than that because um, you get better and faster as you get used to making each section. That obviously is not going to work, so let me get a bigger piece of this. Let's see. Okay. Some people just listen to me talk when they're sewing. So don't worry if you get bored and you want to move on. But otherwise, I just I want to keep sewing while I get one more piece of these pieces made. So this way I've done all of it and I know how it's going to act for you. And if you're one of the people that just listen to me while you sew, then you'll have the full time that I'm normally here. All right. So here we go. The last piece, this, and you know, I thought this one was going to be hard. It looks like, if not the hardest one of the series, one of the second hardest, and it's not hard at all. So I'm going to go back over again what I was telling you, which is it has the number piecing in the wrong place. From what I learned, and there it is. That was not hard at all. That's the beauty of paper piecing. Okay? So, it, and, and I like, see how these inner ones, I kept them the same? I like that. Because that way your mind, <laughs> you, don't, you don't get a headache from trying to figure out what in the world is that pattern. And I just took and I put a little touch of glue to glue this down that way. And I already glued this tip down so that when I sew the two pieces together to make the block, I've got them. So now I'm just going to, that was section A. Here is section B. Section B says, this is the first piece you put down. I don't agree. I, I think this little interior you usually don't start at one end. You start with a block that a lot of other pieces lay on, like the center of a cluster. So start here. All right. I need my dark red. 
And let's see. All right. I glue it. Whoops. Don't forget. Glue it. Put your fabric on the side with no marking. That's why it's important to have the lines crease so you can see where to put it. All right. Now I'm going to trim around the first piece. Fold this up. Leaving just a quarter of an inch. Fold this side back. Leaving just a quarter of an inch. Fold this back. Leaving a quarter of an inch. All right. So now you see my triangle. And this is off the edge, so you don't have to worry if you see a messy edge like that. All right, then I'll come back in with the teal, and I will lay the other part of this, and always fold that fabric back to make sure you've got it the placement right. Okay. So this week I had a wonderful young man. He had been a student of my daughter's at a local high school and he's starting his own painting business and I hired him to come and paint the eaves of the house that's on the second story part and uh, he did a wonderful job. Such care and so I was very happy I had to pay somebody because Mark and I could not, there's no way we could have gone 20 feet in the air. And, um, but it was really nice to give um, a young man with his new business. So that felt good. I, I liked that. Okay, now I'm going to look back at the front again. The dice right, dark blue goes on each side. Sometimes I don't mind using a big piece of fabric like this. Sometimes I like to cut it in smaller pieces. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. This is so, so simple. I tell you the truth. And it's the only way I would do complex designs. I mean, how easy is that? Whew, I need that fan again. It's warm today. Okay. Line this up. Be careful as you're... See, I, I don't pin it anymore because I'm so used to doing it. But you have to just be careful that if you don't pin it, you still got it lined up. Okay. One thing I hate is taking out stitches on paper piecing. All right. But now you know why I love Miss Carol's 
fabric she used. Oh my gosh, that is going to be a keeper. That is wonderful. But see, do you see how easy this is? I mean, wow. All right, so now the next piece is going to be this one. This one right here. Because you, you stay near the center and work out this way and out this way. And usually any good paper pattern is going to make it clear. And, and you won't even have to think about it. They'll work it out for you. But since you sew it on the wrong side and flip it, you have to make sure that you can enclose all the edges. That's why you would never start on one side and work across. At some point, you might not be able to, you wouldn't be able to flip every time. Okay. And if you do your own design, just make sure you've, you've got it lined up and numbered correctly so that you can always sew and flip. Except for the first piece. Okay, so now there's that point. Then I'm going to do the curly blue. Let me grab. And when I say curly blue, it's just, it's got little curly cues on it, but it's just the name that I knew I would, I would know what I was meaning. Okay, let's see. It's nice to be able to use these smaller scraps. Good. With the littler ones, just make sure you hold them in place correctly because you do not want to come up short on one of the seams. And they tend to move around just a little bit. Try to sew right on the line and as straight as you can on the line. Okay. I don't think this is going to fit. No, I need a new piece. And remember, don't be so selfish with fabric that you cause yourself extra work. It's not worth it. And once you have to take stitches out of the paper, it just makes it that much harder. Because the paper then wants to rip. Now, you can, if you can afford specific foundation paper, then that's wonderful. I am frugal or cheap. And so I just use my copy machine paper and I use my copy machine paper and um, it, it can be a little harder to tear out, but don't let that worry you because I make, that's one of the reasons I press, I crease the lines so good because that will help make it easier. Okay. I need to sharpen my blade. All right. Didn't trim this off close enough over here. Quarter of an inch away. All right. So now I'm ready for my fun greens. All right. Lime green goes on this side right here. Okay, that's going to fit beautifully.
Okay. Now, where is my little ruler? I like using that ruler for the outside edges. I want to cut enough off, but not too much. All right, so now I use my medium green for this side. And I did about three shades for each color. So three blues, three greens, three reds. So that I could play with them back and forth and hopefully make the stars sparkle. All right, almost done. Oops. It's all fun and games until the bobbin runs out. <laughs> Have you ever noticed sometime when I'm like putting binding on, I get sewing really good and then realize, oh, the last two feet. There was no bobbin thread. <laughs> oh. But there was a sign at my favorite little local shop that said, it's all fun and games until the bobbin runs out. Isn't that the truth? Okay. Oops. All right. That's okay. And I still do not have my sewing machine back, so I sure hope some of these shortages will quit. It is not fun. Okay. All right, now I'll fold it back here so I can get a nice smooth edge for my background. I'm almost done, guys. So, this is not too bad at all. Okay, let me put my add a quarter ruler here. Okay, my last piece, which is my background. Nice big piece of background here. And then I'll put these two pieces together, and so you'll see what a quarter of the block will look like. And hopefully you've had a chance to see that it's truly not that hard. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Use my ruler to line this up here. And then line it up here. So I put a little touch of glue here. This really helps when you line them up. All right. Now, I'm not a perfectionist, but let's say you want to do a good job of lining these up. Okay? And, whoops. Oops, hold on. Let me see. Well, this is not working. You want to do a good job of lining these up. If you paper piece and you're accurate with all your paper piecing, you'll have perfectly aligned seams. So now what I'm going to do is I, I messed with them until I figured out the way they're going to go together. And now... Oh, Rose is here. Hi, Regal Rose. Oh... I don't blame you. Well, very nice to see you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pen in right here at this intersection. And then come right over 
and stick it out right at the other intersection. Come right through these intersections. Okay? This takes just a minute, but it keeps all of your seams perfectly aligned. This is the only method, paper piecing is the only method where I get perfect seams. Trust me, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> so you make sure that the pen, this is the Alex Anderson method I learned. Make sure the pen is perpendicular. Then you know it's in the exact place. Now, there's not another intersection, but what I'll do is push it through right there on the line and make sure, see, it didn't quite match this other side, so I will just pull it away and put it right on the line. I mean, it was only a hair off. There we go. See how that, now it's right on the line. All right, so now that I've got two good points, I'll pull this first one out and come and put that one. Now down here, I have another intersection. Let me pull this a little closer. Okay, I've got another intersection here. Whoa! Okay. Well, that's nice, but that's not going to work. So let me tighten up the screw. Okay. So here I go. I've got that intersection, okay? So I'm going to come through this intersection first. I'm going to put the pin right in that intersection. Whoops, ouch, don't stab myself. It's hard, I want to do it so I show the camera, but then it's hard for me to see. Right there at that intersection, okay? Then come through on this intersection. Make sure that, keep working it until you get the intersection just right, right on the money. Okay, so see? There's the pin right at that intersection. Here's the pin going in right at the intersection. So with this pin being perpendicular, now you can go in here and put another pin to hold it in place. Then pull out that perpendicular pin because at that point, it's not really helping you anymore. All right, so here I go. I've got two pins on the back and one pin on this side. All right, now I sew up this long diagonal edge. And it's a little tough when you get to those intersections because you've got maybe eight fabrics all together coming to one point. All right, so here I go. And let's see how we did. That's always the fun part. Now, I don't get as excited if it's not paper piecing. But with paper piecing, I know I've matched up all my junctions, so it is good. And what I do now is I take, oops, let me see. Let me, well, okay. What I do now is I take and crease open, crease open this. Normally I do not open seams because it makes them weaker, more vulnerable. But on this where you've got so many pieces of fabric, like here, eight pieces at this one junction. And I finger press it, then I go and give it a real pressing Okay. All right. Then I come back, and here it is. Okay. So, even though it looked, it looked complicated, I think that that's a fun block. Okay. So here we go, and I'm just, it's just a matter of going back and forth with different fabrics, trying different designs, and they'll all work together, 
but you try to do something a little bit different each block. All right? So, I think that's it for me today. Hello, Patricia from Nova Scotia. Aw, uh, well, I was running late today, so I've only got a quarter of this week's Christmas block of the week done. But I will make sure to finish it, and I'll have it put on our website and in this. So, all righty. Oh, he's getting the... Oh, thank goodness. Oh, you had to offer... Did you have to promise him you'd get a tattoo if he got the jab? Hey, way to go. That If that's what you have to do, way to go. I heard someone on Fox News, because I sometimes I turn on just to see what ridiculous thing they're going to say. And the person said... If you've had your vaccination, this is their number one person. If you've had your vaccination, then you shouldn't be worried or afraid. It has no effect on you if someone doesn't get their vaccination. That's wrong. They're lying. I mean, out and out lying. It is wrong. There was a man down in Arkansas who was having a heart attack. They couldn't find a hospital. They tried 43 hospitals. He died. Because the hospitals are full of people who wouldn't get a vaccination. We all are going to pay higher health care costs due to people who have been hospitalized. And 96% of people who are in the hospital from COVID haven't been vaccinated. So guess who picks that up? That tab up. Then the other thing is the people who are not getting vaccinated are creating the mutant versions of the covid that could well end up killing all of us because so far we've been hopefully lucky that our vaccinations are working. But you never know. The longer the, that, the longer that that virus is out there, the more it changes, and our vaccinations could end up being worthless. So please know that everyone who is not vaccinated, they are not doing their part. They're not showing love of humanity. And so if they are really pro-life, then they're going to get a vaccination because you can't be for people dying and say you're pro-life too. Okay? So anyway, I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have said anything about that, but it made me angry when I heard that because I said that's a lie that's going to kill people. And I'm sorry, I still can't go out. And I'm going to have to get the booster because I have too many risk factors and I can't take the chance of even getting a breakthrough infection. And it's scary because if you get into a car accident, you might not be able to have a, get, be able to get into a hospital to be treated. That's not fair. That is not fair. If you're in the hospital because you chose not to get a vaccination and you're taking up that good space and those good resources and you're working these doctors and nurses to death, that doesn't sound like a very patriotic and loving human being to me it sounds selfish so now i might have just made a bunch of people mad but i'm sorry i've run out of patience and i hate to see so many people between 1500 and 2000 people a day dying for no reason so there i go but kim you win the the best mom award for finding a way to get through to your son so and i'm so proud of you and proud of him. Good job. All right. So here is Christmas block number four. The moment I finish this, I'll be a third of the way through my new Christmas quilt. So, all right. Keep sending me your photos. I need more and more and more photos of things you do. And let's get going. Have a great week. I know I am because my sweetie's back. And I have missed him. We have been together during the pandemic for a year, over a year and a half. We've been together 24-7. So we thought, oh, it'll be so nice to have time apart. We missed each other terribly. So, but you know, the pandemic either makes you or breaks you. And I got lucky this time. <laughs> Very lucky. 
take good care of yourself this week. Be thinking of me. I've got to get over my anti-exercise feeling and get out there and walk every day. Oh, here is our Mark. He's back. Yes. Oh, we're going to. Oh, yep. Yeah, we're going to exercise. <laughs> He's promised to go exercise with me every day. So anyway, isn't it good to see him back? Take good care, everybody. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. And way to go, Kim. You way to go.